What's on your radar, Robbie? Well, this is a fun one, Bacha. So Maitland Jones Jr. was a professor of chemistry at Princeton University. In 2007, he semi-retired and began teaching organic chemistry at New York University on an adjunct basis. Not anymore, though. NYU has fired Jones after students circulated a petition protesting that his class was too hard. But according to Jones, the students weren't putting in enough effort and had become disengaged, anxious, and indolent as a result of the COVID pandemic. Quote, they weren't coming to class, that's for sure, said Jones. They weren't watching the videos and they weren't able to answer the questions. Now, Jones is profiled in a recent New York Times article that chronicles his firing. The piece also raises uncomfortable questions about elite institutions of higher learning and their utter devotion to appeasing unreasonable student demands. Organic chemistry is the bane of medical students everywhere. If you know anyone who went through medical school, they will tell you that. It's a bane precisely because it's such a hard class. But many doctors would argue that's the point. The class is designed to act as an effective gatekeeper preventing underqualified students from entering the field of medicine. This article made my skin crawl, tweeted Alice Dreger, who's a bioethicist, a historian, and a former professor of medical humanities. We aren't going to end up with good doctors by letting undergrad pre-meds pass organic chem because universities want to protect their US news rankings. So according to the New York Times, 82 of Jones' 350 students signed the petition last spring. It alleged that too many of them were failing and that this was unacceptable. The students cited emotional and mental health complaints to make the case that Jones ought to make the class less difficult. We urge you to realize that a class with, class with such a high percentage of withdrawals and low grades has failed to make students' learning and well-being a priority and reflects poorly on the chemistry department as well as the institution as a whole. That was according to the petition. Now, the Times article suggests that throughout the pandemic, Jones made a number of accommodations, actually, for struggling students. He reduced the difficulty of his exams, but students were still failing them. Students were misreading exam questions at an astonishing rate, Jones told the Times. The article does note that the petition never actually called for Jones to be fired. The university did that of its own volition, evidently deciding that the best way to resolve the situation was to cut him loose entirely. His departure is, in my view, a loss, certainly, for NYU's academic caliber. After all, Jones is a lion in the field of organic chemistry. He published 225 papers in his 40-year career. He literally wrote the textbook, Organic Chemistry, which weighs in at a whopping 1,300 pages. Quote, learning to teach during a time when the goal was to teach at a very high and rigorous level. Paramjit Arora, a professor of chemistry at NYU and former colleague of Jones, described his teaching method. We hope that students will see that putting them through that rigor is doing them good. Well, NYU clearly feels differently about the matter. NYU had uh, Professor Maitland, Professor Jones, a faculty member with a one-year appointment specifically to teach organic chemistry. That was according to John Beckman, who's a spokesperson for NYU, who I reached out to for a statement. And Beckman says, in one of his organic chemistry classes in the spring of 2022, there were, among other troubling indicators, a very high rate of student withdrawals, a student petition, of course, and course evaluation scores that were by far the worst, not only among members of the chemistry department, but among all the university's undergraduate science courses. Multiple student complaints about his dismissiveness, unresponsiveness, condescension, opacity about grading, etc. Beckman also said, so what exactly would be the argument for renewal of this appointment? NYU has lots of hard courses and lots of tough graders among the faculty. They don't end up with outcomes like this. Surely among the many things a university should stand up for, including academic freedom, academic rigor, and a robust research enterprise, one of them should be good teaching. Good teaching shouldn't be pitted against rigor as an excuse for poor teaching. Good teaching and rigor are perfectly compatible, and the latter is not a threat to the former at NYU. Again, that was according to the spokesperson. But look, the question isn't whether students deserve good teachers, of course they do, but whether good teachers should feel compelled to pass students who fail to demonstrate mastery of an extraordinarily important and complex subject matter. Celebrated organic chemistry professor Maitland Jones Jr. had high standards and we can't have that in 2022, writes the leftist author and teacher Freddie DeBoer. NYU students, who are by any rational measure some of the most privileged people on planet Earth, organized a petition and got him fired. I hope you never get treated by one of the doctors who emerges from this mess." End quote. 
So I wanted to highlight this incident, Bacha, uh, which the New York Times, you know, summarized very, uh, very wonderfully. In, in it's a, a great article for Bill to read, and I saw you know everybody kind of talking about it on social media. And look, I I, I get that organic chemistry is a nightmare. I, I you know I have friends who became doctors, et cetera, who took the class, who described it as extremely difficult. But we're getting into this place where you know they're describing kind of their trauma at having had to experience a difficult class, um, and, and that's not like if you're not cut out for it, you're not cut out for it. Part of it is to determine. Like I wouldn't be cut out for it. This is not, I, I could never pass organic chemistry. I wouldn't. I could, I could not go on to become a doctor. I was not good at science and math. I'm a you know li liberal arts person over here. So uh, so take that for what it's worth. But it it's it's difficult on purpose because that's what you need to become a doctor and and to have them you know demand all these accommodations and then the university absolutely wants to fulfill what the students are asking for no you know no respect for that this man has been an effective teacher for like half a century they n want to give in and give these students exactly what they want and we, we've seen that happen in so time and time again, it actually even in situations more outrageous than this one, over and over again, university administrators bending over backward to make their students happy, even if their students are being completely unreasonable. And it's it's becoming a problem not just in higher education, but like in the rest of society, because then students who were educated under that paradigm enter, quote unquote, the real world, and they demand, they, they expect that same level of accommodation, which doesn't work when you, if, you're, if you're employed by you know, a, a company or, or in, in law or in medicine, et cetera, or in media. And, and we, that's where primarily probably you and I deal with uh, what, are, what are really <laughs> outrageous sometimes uh, you know, demands for, for mental wellness accommodation. So all that is true. And yet, <laughs> I do think that a lot of these fields have pretty random gatekeeping functions assigned to them in the form of extremely difficult classes that you don't really need in the profession. So I a little bit, I, I mean, you're totally right. These kids sound just awful. <laughs> and you're totally right that universities like NYU have become essentially just, uh, you know, expensive, uh, you know, like high class product consumer uh, products for the wealthy and that they're just catering to their clientele, et cetera, et cetera. That's all totally true. It's also true that like most doctors are not going to need organic chemistry and that a lot of people who would be amazing doctors could not pass organic chemistry. And so there's a part of me that also feels that, um, you know, a lot of things that are very important to being a doctor, there's no test for, you know, like listening skills and things like that, that we just, mm. so I know this sounds like a totally woke position, but I can't help but feel a little bit like, you know, we gatekeep for certain things and it's sort of acknowledged in the field that they're, you're gatekeeping so that we don't have too many doctors, right? Which is like, okay, fine. Yeah, we shouldn't have too many doctors. But of course, in the humanities, nobody cares about overproduction of elites. But, you know, so yeah, I could, I, we could say we need a way to, to, to determine who gets to be a doctor, who doesn't. And uh, some of what's being done there is like really gross, like the, uh, the outward discrimination against Asians, just absolutely disgusting, you know? But but at the same time, I also feel like I'm not sure that the gatekeeping apparatus, which is set up around things like organic chemistry, is necessarily always the I mean, of course, some people need organic chemistry if you're an oncologist, maybe. But if you're a gynecologist, you really need to have passed organic chemistry to be a good gynecologist. I'm just not I'm not sold on that. Hmm. Well, Excellent. Uh, thank you so much for a counter perspective. This is why we love having you on. I, sometimes I have no idea well, how you will re re uh, react to a similar. Thing. Well, no, I appreciate what you're saying because I have. I I also think gatekeeping is excessive in a lot of other um, a lot of other context. I think Brianna and I had a heated disagreement on the show like two weeks or so ago when uh, when actually when she was saying, well, don't you know, don't doctors need to go to med medical school, which I agreed with, but I was saying that I didn't think, for instance, daycare workers in D.C. they're trying to require 
daycare workers to have education degrees, which I think is insane. Um, right? It prevent it actually prevents like low income immigrant people from getting jobs in D.C. Um, so I uh, generally against gatekeeping. This seems to me to be one instance where you do want to filter out people a little bit, but uh, maybe it could be made easier. But th then the other thing, though, is. Uh, is showing, and look, I, I feel for students who, who went through the pandemic, but they're describing how just like utterly, utterly uh, difficult it was to learn anything through remote learning. And I think that's important to keep in mind that even at the elite college level, remote learning for a lot of people was a farce and just left them totally unprepared um, for, for what was to come. But uh, well, we have to leave it there, but we'll have more rising after this.